Hi guys, how do I create content aware selections in images in Affinity Photo? Now this is the act of removing items from within um, an image or relocating them within an image actually and leaving a nice little background behind them. So let's start off with a new document. Open a new document, just use the default when you select new document. It doesn't matter what you use. I like to pinch it in so I can see what I'm doing on the screen. And you probably turn it in landscape mode. It's up to you. I'm using this on an iPad, obviously. So, to start, let's put an image from the stock studio onto the canvas. Let me show you. Now, I'll use this one. And you can see I'm using the image of a dog on a train track. that's over on the right-hand side there. Now, resize it. With the image dropped on the canvas, it's probably too big, but you can resize it easily and in proportion using the Transform Studio. So start off by anchoring it in the center and then lock the width and height and reduce the width to suit your image or canvas. So you can put the lock on there and then you just scroll down on the width and it will reduce everything to a nice usable size. You get most of the image on. You now have a neat working image. Very nice. And you can see clearly there's a dog on the tracks. Mm -hmm. Now duplicate the layer and lock the original. That's just in case you really hash it up and you need to come back and start again. I never do that. So our image ready to work on. Now select the top duplicated and unlocked layer. You want that top layer there, not the one you've locked and hidden. Tap on the selection persona and the move tool. So you've got the move tool selected on the left hand side. Tap on the selection persona. You can see you've got that, you've got that top layer selected. Now making a selection, tap on the smart selection brush that's third down from the top and set the width in the content toolbar to about 100 to start with. You'll probably actually go quite a little bit lower than this. I think I ended up working with 16. Now it's important, select the working layer and in the layers toolbar, rasterize the layer to change it from an image to a pixel layer. You want that layer as a, it'll be defaulting to an image, but you want a pixel layer. Now, you can see you've got your width of your selection brush set to 100 there, but it's really quite large. Um, it'll occupy most of the dog, and it's a fairly small dog. So you can adjust that as you go along. Now, let's try and select just the dog. We're going to move the dog off the tracks. So begin brushing in the dog with the brush until you're happy with having selected it neatly. Use the Add or Subtract option in the Context Toolbar as needed to get the marching ants where you want them. You can also adjust the brush width down to about 15 for better control. Now I've selected right out to the edges of the halo effect, not just the edges of the dog, but you can see this dog's got a, something of a white halo around it. I've selected right out to the edge of that halo. I suspect that this image may be a made-up image in any case. Hence, you've got that um, halo effect. Now, tap Refine Selection. It's the very bottom option. The image will change to red with around the dog. Adjust it if you need to, and a tap Apply in the Context Toolbar. When you tap Apply in the Context Toolbar, it comes back to your standard layer with a selection outlined by the crawling ants. Switch back to Photo Persona. You were in the Selection Persona, remember? Switch back to Photo Persona and select Edit, Pasteboard and Cut. We're going to cut the dog out. And there it goes. The layer with the dog cut out. Now remember, the dog is still in the in the clipboard there. It hasn't gone away. But it's cut out of the image for the moment. And the selection is still there. Now you have a gap where the dog was. 
Next step, again, click Edit, Pasteboard and Paste, and the dog is back, but on its own layer. Now the magic begins. Select the layer below the dog, the layer you cut the dog from. The dog is still selected, and you also have the copy pasted into its own layer. In the Layers panel, deselect the dog so you can't see it, and make sure your cutout layer is selected still. You can see I've got that layer is highlighted. You can see the dog on it because I haven't removed the dog yet. Now, from the Filter Studio, select Fill. It's alphabetical, so it's about halfway down. In the Context Toolbar, change the mode to In Painting. It'll take a moment to think about it on the iPad, but eventually it does it. And then you can tap Apply. Switch back to Selection Persona and tap Deselect. That gets rid of the crawling ants. The deselect option removes the marching ants. OK, what's left needs just a bit of touching up, but that's easy, isn't it? And you can see in the layers panel, I still haven't got the dog selected, so we can't see the dog at all now. Well, not much anyway. Now we can put the dog back. So turn that layer on by selecting it. And there's the dog. The deselect option removes the marching ants, remember, and what's left just needs a bit of touching up. Now, we've done that twice, but we've got the dog back. Move the dog off the tracks and adjust its size. Now we just need to smooth out the infill. Depending on your image, this may not even be necessary. As I say, I think this image has been adjusted before it ended up in Pixabay. So that's all right, but that's where the image was, and you can see it fairly clearly there, but we can adjust that out. Smooth out the infill, as mentioned. Depending on your image, this may not even be necessary. The dog is now safe. It's no longer on the tracks, although it's pretty close. So I hope that's quite a useful little thing to be able to do. I probably could have picked a better image to use that on for the infill option, but that's up to you. Experiment. It's the fun of this whole set of applications. Very neat. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click on, click on the thumbs up to like the video. I really appreciate it. It helps me count. And you can see on the bottom there, there's a link to Envato Elements. So if you're into crafting or cricket or silhouette or any of those, or you even want more images and more work, more uh, material for your own designs, Envato Elements is the best place to go.